This tutorial is brought to you by flbeattutorials.com. In this tutorial, I want to show you how you can transition your beats, basically taking your verses into your hooks or choruses and making that a smooth or interesting transition. A lot of times you can just run out your verse and it goes straight into the the hook or the chorus and it doesn't really give the hook or the chorus that excitement that it needs. Uh, to, to build the anticipation of the listener up for the hook or the chorus. So that's what we want to try to do in this tutorial. We just want to do a few simple changes that can really add a good, dynam good dynamic to your beat transitions and really help them out. So uh, let's uh, check out what we have here so far. So this is uh, my verse here, and this is when the hook kicks in. So I'm just going to play you a small sample of what I have so far. Uh, with none of the transition effects that we're going to use in this tutorial. So let's just hear it plain and simple how it is now. Okay, so as you can hear, uh, when the hook kicked in, it was definitely louder because there's a lot more instruments in it. And uh, that's kind of the purpose. I want my hook to stand out. I want it to be powerful in the strong point of the song. However, it wasn't, there wasn't a lot of anticipation or a good transition from the verse to the chorus. Let's listen to just this small part one more time. Okay, so how... What are some ways that we can fix that? Well, one thing that I think is really cool that can really make your hook sound big is to fade out the drums right at the end of the verse and just leave your melody in and let it drop let the drums drop right back in when the hook kicks in. So let's let me show you that here. We just pull our drums back. Now let's take a listen. So as you heard there, when I faded out the drums, it, it made the hook sound really big when it kicked in. So what are some other things we can do? Well, one thing I really like to do is use either reverse cymbals or uh, different types of drops or fade effects. So how do we do that? One way you can do it is grab uh, some samples that you have in a folder, maybe a crash sample or a... Uh, any type of drop sample, we'll start with a drop and pull that in. Okay, so we have that here. And I'm just going to play around with it. Let's try, try putting it here and see what that sounds like. Okay, that was, I like what that was doing, but I want to move it over a little bit just so it hits right before the transition. Now let's listen. Okay, I definitely like that, but what I want to do is uh, make sure that this cuts off right at that point where the, the chorus kicks in. Let's just chop that. And there we go. Now let's take a listen. And uh, one last thing you can do just to make sure it fades out completely if you left click right here go down to automate and volume put that in just grab that so now the volume is going to start out high and it's going to completely be removed by the time that fades out there so now let's take a listen another cool thing you can do this may be too short of a sample but we'll give it a shot anyway is uh, you can also use panning effects. So what I'm gonna try to do here is make this drop fade from left to right in the headphones. So let's go, oops, I'm on my automation clip here. Just gonna move that over for the moment and create a new automation clip for panning. 
So this should be left 100% and right 100%. So let's take a listen to that. I'm not getting the effect there. See what this does here. Okay, it's actually the way I'm recording, you're not hearing that. Um, but that would definitely give you a nice panning effect uh, if you do set that up within FL Studio. So just know that it's not going to come through on this recording because of the way I'm recording it. So I'll go ahead and delete that and we'll just uh, leave in our volume pan here. Bring that back over. <laughs> Okay, so as I mentioned before, now I want to add a reverse symbol effect. Now, one thing I recommend is after you create a reverse symbol effect, you save that as a sample so you always have it. Uh, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to start out with a basic uh, crash symbol, like a big crash, maybe something you would hear in an orchestra. And we're going to reverse that and then use that as the transition effect. So I am looking for my big crash, and here it is. So I'm gonna pull that in. You know what, I've actually, I did actually already reverse that. So let me show you what that sounds like. Okay, so you can see basically, um, I'll, sh I'll show you it in reverse so you can see what, what happened. Have the big crash here. That's the, the new effect that you just heard. Before I reversed it, started out with this symbol. Uh, now let's hear it. So you can see it's a nice sounding symbol, but we want to build the anticipation up. So we want to reverse that. So let's click that reverse button and there you have it. And then if you want to save your reverse symbol somewhere for future use, you can right click down here, click save as and save it as a sample somewhere on your hard drive. So you can uh, re-import that later and won't have to reverse it each time. So now that I have that in here and we just want to go ahead and play that here. And again, if you want to automate that, left click, automate, volume. And usually when I do these, I will do a volume envelope going up to increase the volume as it goes. So going from left to right, you want to bring it up. Okay, so we're already getting a nice transition effect that I really like. And, you know, that was basically done s simply with just a few steps, and it already makes the hook sound much bigger and gives you a much better transition. Now, there is a few other things you can mess with um, just with what we have here. But if you come in here uh, by left-clicking, you can do some other things such as chop. And uh, let's do a stutter effect. And move my volume envelope back over and let you hear that now. So you could hear right at the end of that cymbal crash, there was some stuttering going on. So that's another cool effect you can do. And uh, if you actually, if you undo that, Uh, you can try a couple couple different things within that chop feature. Uh, there's three different ones. Um, I haven't tried this one yet. You might be able to do that with this. Let's hear what that sounds like. Looks like that's going to give us a really odd effect, but we'll check it out here. Yeah, not really what we wanted there. 
but you just want to play around with these different effects until you find something that you really like and uh you know just really do these small things can really make your beat stand out um you know just minor tweaks can really make your beat stand out compared to the competition because a lot of people won't take the time to do these little changes and uh just little things that can really make your beat stand out and really add some dynamics to it all right well i hope you enjoyed this tutorial uh thanks so much for watching and if you liked it uh please comment subscribe and uh we look forward to seeing you here soon thanks